June's here, the grills are hot, the pools are full, and summer break is calling. But the atmosphere? It has other plans. Why May typically marks the peak of tornado season, June falls close behind, often producing widespread outbreaks as the jet stream stays active and ingredients align across the plains and Midwest. And this year, those ingredients are stirring. Jet streaks, gulf moisture, and some familiar climate signals are setting the stage for a potentially stormy ride. I'm Kyle Coxon, and in this forecast, we're digging into the patterns, the risk zones, and what to expect across the country. Have you ever experienced a tornado in June? Share your story or what part of the country you're watching from. To understand where tornadoes might strike, it helps to know where they've hit in the past. May is typically the busiest month for tornadoes in raw numbers, but June is still very active, ranking just behind April in some years. June often brings widespread outbreaks as the storm tracks lift north. Regions like Nebraska, Kansas, Colorado, and Iowa become hotspots for severe weather fueled by rich gulf moisture and lingering upper-level support. It's like the atmosphere has unfinished business from spring, and it's taking it out on the plains. June 2001 gives us a valuable case study. The atmosphere that year featured a neutral ENZO, slightly positive NAO, a positive AO, and a negative PNA, matching what we're seeing heading into June 2025. The Madden-Julian Oscillation, or MJO, was active in phases 1 through 4, which favored enhanced moisture return and storm development. Notice how the tornado tracks lit up across the central plains and into the Midwest. Patterns like these can shape the background state and help us anticipate where the risk might be the highest. Let's dive deeper into the major players during our June outlook. The AO or Arctic Oscillation is currently positive, which helps limit cold air intrusions and keeps storm activity focused farther north. The NAO or North Atlantic Oscillation is running slightly positive to neutral, a setup that tends to support stronger upper level flow across the central United States. The PNA or Pacific North American pattern is negative. This often results in a more active storm track through the plains. And when the MJO pulses through phases one through four, it enhances both moisture transport and instability. Altogether, these oscillations are waving a big flag saying, stay alert across Tornado Alley. When we look at temperature and precipitation outlooks, they help us visualize which areas might support storm fuel. This June, temperatures are projected to be above normal across most of the country, especially in the southwest and southeast. Drier than normal monthly precipitation in the central Rockies and Intermountain West could enhance the dry line setup. Meanwhile, the 6 to 10 day precipitation outlook shows above normal moisture across the central United States and southeast, and where moisture and warmth meet instability and lift, storms often follow. Short-term cooling in the central plains may be offset by moisture advection from the east and south, especially in early June. The jet stream is our atmospheric steering wheel, and right now it's pointing towards early trouble. A shortwave trough looks to swing into the central plains and upper Midwest to start the month, increasing lift and boosting severe weather potential. Strong shear profiles and embedded jet streaks will support storm organization and longevity, a recipe for supercells and possibly tornadoes. As we move into mid-June, the jet stream is expected to linger across the central plains, upper Midwest, and central Midwest. By late month, there's a chance it nudges northeastward, opening the door for storm clusters across the east and southeast. The overlap of instability and shear is where things get interesting. Early June appears primed for tornado development, particularly across the central plains and upper Midwest. The GEFS models show favorable Cape values intersecting with moderate to strong shear, which increases the odds of organized storm development. Cape gives storms the fuel to grow, while shear helps them rotate. But it's not just about having both, it's also about how they interact with surface boundaries. 
If the ingredients align just right, that's when you can get a powerful storm setup. Let's take a closer look at where tornadoes tend to leave their mark. States like Texas, Nebraska, Kansas, Colorado, Iowa, South Dakota, Minnesota, and North Dakota consistently rank among the highest in June tornado frequency. While Texas leads in total tornadoes, the Central Plains and Upper Midwest shine when you consider tornadoes per area. These regions light up thanks to the frequent collision of rich Gulf moisture with drier air from the Rockies, especially along the dry line. Combine that with strong upper level winds and you have the perfect breeding grounds for June tornadoes. Tracks of EF3 to EF5 tornadoes from past decades show many of the strongest storms also concentrated here. June 2001 offers us a compelling analog for what we could see this year. It had a neutral Enzo, a slightly positive NAO, positive AO, and a negative PNA, very similar to what we're observing now. The MJO was active in phases 1 through 4, enhancing moisture return and instability. Tornado activity stretched from the Central Plains into the Upper Midwest and parts of the Eastern United States. Driven by dryline interactions, strong gulf moisture, and favorable jet alignment. June 2001 is considered a strong analog year for 2025 due to the matching upper level and jet stream pattern, MJO phase progression, and atmospheric conditions. Widespread tornado activity occurred from the central plains into the upper Midwest and extended into parts of the eastern United States, largely driven by gulf moisture, dry lines, and favorable jet stream alignment. The dominant MJO phases 1 through 4 enhanced low level moisture return and boosted instability across the central United States, setting the stage for repeated tornado threats. Now let's talk June 2004, another solid match for 2025. Like this year, we had a neutral Enzo, positive AO, neutral NAO, and a negative PNA. The MJO again favored phases 1 through 4. This setup supported widespread severe weather across the Southern Plains, Central Plains, Upper Midwest, and even into Carolina Alley. The large scale pattern in 2004 mirrored what we are seeing this year, especially in the jet stream placement and MJO phase dominance. Tornado activity extended from the Southern Plains through the Upper Midwest and reached as far east as Carolina Alley, reflecting the broad influence of these supportive patterns. The MJO phases 1 through 4 again enhance instability and moisture return, allowing for repeated severe weather events throughout the month. Now, here's the forecast you have been waiting for. The highest tornado potential this June is centered over eastern Nebraska, Iowa, southern Minnesota, and eastern South Dakota, where analog support is strong and early month jet alignment looks favorable. The moderate risk zone expands to cover Kansas, western Missouri, eastern Colorado, central Minnesota, western Wisconsin, and western Nebraska, areas that could see multiple severe weather setups. The enhanced tornado potential includes the Southern Plains, Central and Upper Midwest, and the High Plains. That means Northern Texas, Oklahoma, Eastern Wyoming, most of Illinois, and Eastern Wisconsin are all in play. This broader area is where moisture, instability, and upper level support are likely to come together in waves throughout the month. To wrap it all up, June 2025 is shaping up to be a dynamic month. The background state from the neutral Enzo to the positive AO, slightly positive NAO, and negative PNA all point towards multiple severe weather setups. Add in favorable MJO phases and you have a strong signal for tornado potential across the central and eastern United States. Historical analogs from 2001 and 2004 show that when these pieces come together, tornado season doesn't just knock, it kicks the door open. If you found this forecast helpful, 
Hit that like button and subscribe to Critical Subnautic Solutions so you don't miss any future outlooks. Stay safe out there and I'll see you in the next forecast.